Welcome you amplifier people. Uh, I'm dressed in blue. Why? Because using Ketner, even though the new amps have very little blue on them. So, what are we looking at? We're looking at Finally, the thing that we should be looking at. Uh, last year, Yusin Ketter came out with the Nano Heads, and it's nice, and it's cute, and it's inexpensive, and I get that. But how realistic are they to actually be used in a live situation? Uh, not. That's what I'm saying. So, they came out with the Spirit of Vintage, which actually, as a pedal platform, an inexpensive pedal platform, okay? Um, it's good. Good cleans around here. Nice vintagey sounds, only a tone knob for tone shaping, it's not really that much. A sagging knob, which on the vintage one actually has a point, on the others I don't quite know that. There is a point, sagging means it's compressing the power amp and um, getting you a little bit more density, getting you a little bit more drive, uh, power amp drive, but not necessarily, it's not that responsive uh, on a, like a rock or a metal amp. So here, yeah, it makes sense, on the others, I don't know. Um, line out, but no speaker compensation on there, which is great. So you can go into... Can you see the cat, baby? It has a line out and that's not frequency compensated, which means you could go into your audio interface and use an IR. Not great for live, but good for recording at home. Uh, but no effects loop. Which again, on this one, you could go clean and put everything in front of it, but come on, everyone wanted an effects loop. They didn't look at the MV50 series from Vox, where everyone said, where's the effects loop? Um, they didn't learn anything from other products, and I was really pissed off about that. I'm sorry, I was. I even yelled at them for it. Um, phones Out has a little bit of a compensation on it, but not great. This could have been a much better product. And let's, let's bitch more. By the way, I'm getting paid to do all this bitching. They're paying me to say crap about their products. I know, weird. Um, here we have the rock, all black, exactly the same features, no compensation here, all good. Uh, way too much gain. Like rock, we're talking about classic-y rock sounds and then maybe like a, a JCM800. Right here, it's a JCM800. What's all this for? It's ultra mega 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 gain. Literally the half of the knob doesn't do shit. So I didn't think that was very well thought out. And the sagging is kind of neat, but it gets way too dense. And do you really need a sag knob? You'd rather need some kind of tone shaping. Same thing goes for the metal. Way too much gain. What's the point? Technically the rock is the metal. So that's what they released last year. And I'm thinking what they now released is literally making these obsolete because they gave us the thing that we need with all the features that we want, I think. So it's right there and it's called the Amp Man. Based on Houston Kettner's uh, Amp Tube Man, which was a back in the day, 90s or whenever, um, a kind of pedal board amp with DI out. They always had good DI because they have the red box. So back in the day, that was a very popular product. And so they brought back now the Amp Man instead of the Tube Man. This is, of course, all uh, analog, all transistor, and they have their spirit module in there, which works with fairy dust. And it's right there and it glows. Nobody knows what it is, but it's a transistor kind of thing. But it's extremely well done. Class D power amp. And that means we have 50 watts at 4 ohm. Nobody has a 4 ohm cap, I think. Uh, that means we have 25 watts at 8 ohm. That's realistic. Borderline can maybe survive in a band. Okay. Uh, and then you have 12.5 at 16 ohm. Run it at 8 and you're good. You'd love to run it at 4, but you probably don't have a cap that can do that. So let's go through the features on top of it. And then in the back. Oh, by the way, there are two versions. This is the classic, and that's the modern. And you can see the difference is, the, the, the size difference is gigantic. I mean, the classic is like one, two, it's like five times the size of the... Okay, please tell me you knew that was an attempt at a joke. I know not a funny one, but still. This is the second channel of the modern is the metal. The second channel of the classic is the rock. The first channel as you can see on this cream knob, is both the vintage. So we have first channel, 
master, which applies to the cab sound, uh, not the DI sound. For DI, this is the volume. Uh, then we have sagging, which makes sense for the vintage channel. Uh, and then we have presence and resonance. So that's a treble and a bass knob, but for the power amp. And they found out that it makes more sense in the power amp section. And I don't care where it is. I don't care where it is as long as I have treble and bass. Whether that's done in the preamp or the power amp, that's for the techie people to know, not me. Then you have tone, which is an overall kind of, it changes the mids, but also the highs. Play with it, it's the same tone as on the nanos. And then you have gain. And in addition to the gain, you have a boost, which is differently voiced per channel. And why in the world would the rock channel, which we have here, need more boost when I already critiqued that on the nano, it had way too much gain. Well, because they did exactly what I was asking for and probably other people, they pulled back the gain to make it much more dial inable but then you can get back that ridiculous gain for leads and stuff with the boost. And that's foot switchable with soft clickies. Nicely done using Getna. So, and that brings us to channel two. That's the rock channel, uh, master for your cab, volume for DI or for uh, setting the two volumes, sagging, which we'll see how much that does, especially given the fact that there's less gain there now, and then presence and resonance as treble and uh, bass, tone and gain, and the gain this time around is much more easy to dial in nuances. And if you want that extra gain that the Nano had, you punch in the boost. Before I forget, um, one critique, using Kettner, you didn't test this in high light conditions because it is a rather bright gray. And if there's light directly shining on it, there's absolute, I'm, I'm blocking the light with this. Hello, Umbild. Um, yeah, there's no way to read what you're doing. Obviously, do you need to read it on stage? You shouldn't, but I'm saying, why not use black writing? You need to test the shit. Every little detail counts when you send, this, send it to a little dipshit like me. So, my super high-tech light blocker. Cost me 7,000 euro, that piece of cardboard. Um, we have a channel switch. Right there, you can see what channel's on. That's actually the only thing that's blue on these. Right there. And here is the pièce de résistance. Finally, the effects loop. How cool is that? It has an effects loop. And this is a solo function, which will boost it. I actually never use that because I don't, I don't play alive. So let me see what the solo thing does. Activate this switch to push the volume up beyond the master level by the number of dBs set on the solo knob. Watch the solo knob. Ah, it doesn't say solo knob. There's a, you can't see this. See, you see, there's a tiny little line going from solo to the red knob. This isn't master for channel two. This is the solo knob. This is master, I think. And this is how much solo you do. 12. Solo master, yes. Okay, that's what that is. That's the solo volume. That's the master volume. I had no idea that was, okay. Hey, read the manual, people. Really, really, really cool. I set it up into smart mode, which means if my effects loop and my boost is on in channel one, it is not on in channel two. So let's say I'm doing this. Channel one has effects loop on, channel two has boost on, and you can see that it remembers that per channel. You can switch that by holding these two in. And now, it doesn't remember, now it's global. But I really like that. And I actually think it also remembers the noise gate. Wait, there's a noise gate? Why in the world did they starve this of features and then put them all in there? How many thousands of euro is that amp, man? There is a noise gate, uh, which is easy to dial in and apparently as far as I know in smart mode even remembers the setting. There is an effects loop. Uh, you have a phones out with a mini jack in the back. You have an aux in to practice with things. 
Um, it even says back here, 25 watts at 8 ohms, which is probably what most people use. And then, a uh, yes, and then, there is XLR out. That's professional. That's really cool. Real XLR out with the mic line switch level, which you can turn off. So you can use your IR loader, uh, wall of sound, whatever, in the, in the door, or you turn that on, and then you use one of eight simulated caps. These are not IRs. They are analog simulations from the red box, but very, very good simulations. The only thing that's missing a little bit is the moving in the room, the air feeling. But they're doing this extremely well. And if you have a little bit of reverb, ah, ah, this is an insane DI solution. I'm not shitting you. I'm very, very impressed by this. Solo, effect loop switchable, boost for more gain reserves, two channels, it's a real amp. It's not just a fly rig DI thing. Uh, XLR out for professional connections and noise gate and loop uh, and even phones out. In Germany, 319 euro. Uh, no competition. It's an amp. It's not just a pedal. There's no competition. I'm sorry. In the US, 399. I'm going to say no competition. Sound, features, lightweight portability, put this on your board. The only thing I'm missing is stereo, which hopefully they're going to work on in the future and give us something that we as stereo lovers can do. So I'm going to show you the setup that I have here. I have it on the table. I'm going in and before it, I have a Jackson Audio Golden Boy so we can see how it reacts to overdrives. In the effects loop, uh, loop I've got the CXM 1978, which I know is three times the price of the pedal, but whatever. That's in the effects loop as reverb. We're going the eye, but we're also going with the aux, which is what we're going to record first. Now, some of you will say this, the aux isn't meant to be used with transistor amps. It's, it says specifically only use with um, tube amps, but I've used it with transistor amps and it works just as fine, so I don't know what they're crying about. That's what I'm going to do. But I'll quickly go to the built-in uh, cap simulations, because if you ask me, that's what we need to judge it on, and it's brilliant. Let's get some sounds, loads of stuff, boost it with a booster and reverb and effects loop and then we do some metally stuff and then this is a long video. I just got this guitar. Shabbat Lynx. Super mega custom shop. Color changey ridiculousness. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Avi Shabbat made an amazing rock and roll act for me right here. So right now it's in the aux. And since the aux is set up to usually receive quite a bit of volume, I'm going to have to crank up the master quite a bit. And that's a Fort Wolf Queenback loaded cap. You have all the spark of the usual Houston Kettner sounds. Um, what I like to do, because now I have the option, uh, dial in the resonance a bit to make it a little bit fatter. effects loop. Okay, let's see how far I can go, gain-wise. And 
And now you kick in the boost. Yeah, that's a killer lead. And then you put some reverb on, on there. We actually put an overdrive in front of it. Let's see how that works. Works with drives. It does work as a pedal board amp. Um, and turn that off again. A lot of ground to cover here. Let's look at that EQ section. So sagging was in the middle. Let's do very little sagging, which means the power amp isn't really reacting like a power amp would. A little bit thicker, a little bit more dense. So if I give it more gain there. I mean, what can you say? Let's move on quickly with the aux to channel two, but then we're gonna go to the built-in, uh, not uh, not I asked, uh, simulations, which I'm gonna say, do the trick. You don't need an aux for this, realistically. <laughs> you can clearly see not that much gain, the uh, little one, though, the nano head would already have killed you at that setting. So that's great. <laughs> Thank you. 
Feels much more like an actual rock thing now and not like a differently voiced metal amp. So, how much more can we have with the boost? It's not so great when you roll back the volume. I mean, you need a tube amp to do that well. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, let's look at how the sagging works, which is probably better because we can dial in less gain. That's something not so nice. And so on and so on and so on. Again, do we need the sag? Well, it's not in the way anymore because we got everything else that we need. They're saying it can make a solo thicker. Do you really need more thickness than this? <laughs> That's already plenty thick. Oh, let's dial in. Yeah, this is how a lot of the others were. That's all the way up now. Uh, noise gate works and then cuts off at some point. Okay, cool. Let's go to the DI. And that means I can literally pull the speaker cable because it doesn't need a load. Gonna go to channel one here, now I gotta dial in my levels. So, uh, the, it sounds really great. Like, too great for the price that they want for it. Um, it's just too good, I'm sorry. But, it's a little bit here. So all you need is a little bit of room, a little bit of reverb to give it some space. So if, I, if I punch in my Chase Bliss here. There. That's all I need. And there's a list of what the speakers are. And you know what? I'm probably not even gonna... Let me see. 
There's a 112 modern teetle port, a 212 modern front port, a 212 vintage blah blah blah. I don't care. Listen, I play a sound. There's eight different ones. I switch it until I'm happy and I need what I need in the mix. You don't need a thousand speakers. I'm gonna say those eight will do. So let's find a good one for cleans. <laughs> That's a good one. If you cut, if you uh, couple this with the TC plethora, for example, it's almost the same size, you can even put this behind it, it has loads of different sounds, that would be a good combination to have, well, two pedals, all the effects you want, recallability, you're done. <laughs> That's a great sound. Good with that. Look at the rock channel. A little bit too honky on that cap. Too much bass. You quickly find what you need. That's not it. It's not it yet. It's not it yet. Back. Ah, we're getting closer. Here we go. And 
then if you want to lead. <laughs> So before with the nano heads, I didn't really see a big need for having a modern or metal version because the rock version kind of went there already. Yeah, a little bit differently voiced, but come on, nothing in EQ can't fix. Now that the rock version has been pulled back and is much has a much wider gain range, the different voicing maybe makes sense on the modern. So if you are not rocking, but you want meddling, here's all the glory of the vintage channel for all your overdriven and clean tones. It's all pretty much the same thing. I just put it in smart mode. Talking about smart mode, it doesn't just remember effects loop and boost. It also remembers the setting of the gate. I just checked in the manual per channel, which is great. So your clean channel could have no gate, whereas your drive channel or your metal channel could have a lot of gate. And it remembers what cap you set per channel. So the clean channel could have that beautiful cap number, I think four. <laughs> Yes, and it remembered. So let's see what the metal channel can do. The sagging is kind of breaking me. It's like, it's like stopping. A little bit fizzly. Let's see if we can fix that with a different cap.
Okay, the boost in that second channel is completely pointless if you ask me. <laughs> Out of fizzleness, is it more metal? Yes, it is. Okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe with a little bit of room. Let's see. I think you always need help with the tiniest bit of space. <laughs> metal fine so let's talk about this thing features yes finally I mean just the effects loop would have been enough in this price range with two channels to make it great but a noise gate okay that's icing on the cake eight different caps with an XLR out that is switchable between mic and line and can be turned off so you can use your own IR uh, even though this is not IR that's an analog simulation but they're great that's pretty phenomenal in that price range. Uh, headphone out with mini jack, okay, aux in, okay, fine. That That's for people that want to practice and all that stuff. 25 watts, this is a real amp. This isn't just a DI solution. This can go on a cap. You can play with this live. And you put this on your board, you put your pedals in front of it and into the effects loop. And you have a real amp, an emergency amp, a churchy kind of an amp, a small gig kind of an amp, or... A real amp. Uh, I, I, I can't fault it in, in any way. I think the vintage channel is great. I think the rock channel takes the vintage channel, goes further. There's some density as, at higher sag settings and at higher gain settings that are, are not to my liking. But generally speaking, you can get so many useful sound out of this. It's almost ridiculous. The fact that it can remember effects loop and boost per channel makes it very useful solo with its own volume very useful live which of course right now we're not doing but who cares it remembers the setting for the noise gate and it remembers the cap per channel this is already features that even products at three times four times the price don't even have so that's all very impressive i gotta say i was very critical with the nano heads and I should have been. Does this sound like a good tube amp? No. It sounds like a very, very good transistor amp. Uh, some of that high-end fizzle in the higher gain settings gives it away. However, it plays beautifully. The cleans are great. It works with pedals. And when I record it, I was literally blown away. As a recording solution for silent recording, this has no competition. And I'm going to get into this in a second. I just want to point out one little thing. Um, I don't know if I have prototypes. I got these from Uwe Six, who's the tester for uh, Houston Kettner. So these might have been pre-series models, but there's a little bit of a snag on this one. The knobs, the twisty knobs in the back, are through the chassis, 
meaning there's a hole in the chassis and they're on the PCB. And this one is pushed in. So when I pull it out, you can feel that there's a stop. When I push it back in a little bit, it turns endlessly. So this one's busted. It does work, but you can clearly see that there is a difference in height. This one's fine, and then you look at this. It, it moves in and out. Uh, it's just pushed in, and uh, it's on the PCB. It's busted, okay? Uh, it does work, but it shouldn't be that far in. So how big is the chance that that can happen on yours? Again, this is a pre-series model. Maybe Uber kicked it. I don't know. I have no idea. Let's just say I have one where that's pushed in, but obviously, should that happen, I'm sure there's a warranty and all that stuff. I'm not going to fault it for this. They do send us YouTuber stuff that's a little bit pre-series. Alternatives. I just reviewed the DSM Humboldt simplifier. That's a simulation, not an amp. It doesn't have a power amp, and it doesn't in any way sound this good. Costs more. Um, modelers. There's the Stramin Iridium at 100 euro more, three different amps, IRs, does a great job, is fully stereo, it's a modeler, it doesn't have a power amp built in, and I'm going to say, because it's a modeler and all that stuff, it's great, it sounds really, really good, but I get kind of the same sounds out of this thing. Can I get a Vox out of it? No, it doesn't say Vox, it says using Ketner. Can I get a Voxy kind of a thing? Well, EQ it a little bit, done. I don't give a shit if it's Fender, Vox, whatever. It's a great clean. And that's what matters. So no, it's not labeled Vox. It's not a modeler and it's not doing other amps. It's doing the amp man. But the sounds are ultra usable. So I would actually, and I'm, I'm sticking to this, prefer to record with this, with the effects loop I can turn it off, with the boost and, and all the knobs, than with the Strymon Iridium. That being said, there's the Walrus Audio ACS-1, the Amp and Cab Simulator ACS-1, fully stereo, different amps and cabs on the left and right, which is great, but it also clocks in at a hundred euro more than this and doesn't have an amp built in. Good sounds. Would I record? Good sounds. The ACS-1 sounds great. It's fully stereo, which you can't do with this, but it doesn't have a power amp built in. So it's not an amp, it's an amp simulator. And of course, you can get for your pedal board uh, an, a, um, um, an HX stomp, loads of effects and loads of amps on this, but it's not an amp. This is hands-on. It's a different concept, but also it's cheaper than everything I've mentioned. Um, I just recently did the pedal board amp, the Zero from Thermion, which is amazing. It's a clean channel only with an amazing reverb and it's fully stereo, two times 30 watts. So it's bigger, it's heavier, and it's more than twice the price. So realistically, there's nothing right now on the market that does what this does. I wouldn't have thought that using Catnap can pull it off. I was pretty disappointed by the nano heads. Sounds okay, but where are the features? And all of a sudden, Four foot switches, solo, switchable effects loop, switchable boost, rememberable and saveable boost loop, two channels, um, uh, basin, treble, power amp, EQ, still have the sagging, solo thing, XLR, uh, if noise gate for recording at home, you will not find a cheaper, better sounding solution for the money. I'm going to put my hand uh, in the fire, something, whatever you say. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, if you're looking for a modeler, the Iridium or the ACS-1 are great. And they're stereo, so they serve a different purpose. But sound-wise, you can get extremely close with this, save 100 bucks, and have quite a bit more features, including putting it on a cap and playing live with it. Houston Kettner is declaring war on the industry. Sorry to say, I have loads of friends in the industry that don't want me to say this. You know who you are. And I love you guys. Um, my friends in the industry that make competing products. However, right now, I don't think there is a competing product. And I'm not saying this because I'm getting paid to say this. I'm getting paid for this video. But I really think that this is the product we've been waiting for. And they released it at a price. Uh, that's a battle cry to all the other competitors.
does it sound as good as a big ass tube amp? Or for example, does it sound as good as, uh, let's say it, uh, the amp one from Blue Guitar? No, I think Thomas still has the better sounding product overall, but doesn't have all those features and it's not in that price range. So check it out. If you're in the metal, maybe check that one out. Uh, bang for the buck. It's utterly ridiculous what they did here. Thanks for watching. Please use my links to Sweetwater and to Toman that uh, supports the channel, that supports the animals, that supports Leslie, uh, that makes it worth what we do here. Uh, I get paid from the companies, but I need your support. The companies support a little bit of money from YouTube, and then you buy a shirt or two. Not this, buy my shirts on Teespring, uh, which is now called, what, Spring? I don't know, something else. Links below. Thank you for watching, and here are some of those animals. Yeah.